So I was at my desk editing an image the other day, and I came across an image that needed some adjustment done to the eyes, and it reminded me of a photo that had been critiqued in the Twip Pro photo community, and I thought, ooh, this is a good opportunity for a demo to show how I might tweak the eyes. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight retouching in this one as well. So here you go. So in this particular image right here, we have our beautiful model. She was um, posing for us at one of my wedding workshops that we did here at my house. And as you can see, her eyes don't need a whole lot. However, there's a little bit that we can do. And for yes, for those of you very astute observers, her eyes are not entirely in focus. So, but that's okay. It's an acceptable image. I would still, I would still deliver this to a client. I still think it's beautiful, um, but it's not perfect, but that's okay. That's all right. Now I want you guys to see, you know, exactly what I, what I work with every day. So when I'm critiquing images, you can, you can uh, sit back and go, well, you know, that's Troy. That's what he does. All right, let's get us in here. Here we go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to brighten up the white areas here, and we're going to brighten up the irises a little bit. So you can do this in Lightroom. I'm going to be doing this in Capture One. So basically, I'm going to grab a brush tool, create a new layer in, in Capture One, and I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. I don't have my shortcut set up, so you're going to have to watch me click around. And I'm gonna turn on the mask, which is M, so I can see where I'm painting. And I really am just gonna paint in the whole eye. And it doesn't have to be super accurate. Actually, it's better if it's not super accurate because I think then it looks more organic, it looks more real. All right, that's probably good enough. All right, turn that mask off. Let's pull back here a little bit. Now there's a couple ways that you could do this here. The, 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 the way that I think is most obvious is you grab exposure. Nah, that doesn't, that doesn't work because it brings everything up all at once. So what we want to do is we really only want to affect the highlights or the highlight end of the spectrum. So in Capture One, you can do this in curves or you can do it in levels. I'm going to do it in levels. So I'm just going to grab the highlight end. I'm going to pull this in. You can see how it's brightening up her eyes right now. It's really nice, really easy to do. So I just bring that up right there. Now, for those of you using Capture One, if you said, oh, well, I want to erase some of that mask, no big deal can see where the mask is you would come up here while you're still on that layer you would select the erase tool or you could just right click while you're in a brush tool and you could select um, the size and adjustments in there there we go bring that down but you got to choose the, the the tool up here unless you know the shortcuts which I can't remember most of them so I'll just erase that there we can see we're cleaning that up a little bit there we go. And I still think it's a little bit too hot. I really don't want to overdo it. I just want a little subtlety. When you're making these adjustments, it's often easy to go too far. And then you go back and you look at it and go, oh man, that's what I do. I go back and forth. Nice thing is I can control the opacity on that layer. Bring that down. All right, let's create a new layer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just bring a little bit of life into the eyes. We're going to make that brush even smaller. We're going to move in. There we go. Make the brush smaller because I'm going to paint right underneath the pupil. Let's go to the draw mask. I'm going to paint in right there. Paint in right there. I'm pretty sure I know where the mask is going to be. It's a little bit lighter than I wanted. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do is we're just going to bring up that area. There you go. And the exposure can work pretty good in this one or in uh, Capture One, you can use the shadows because what it will do is it won't affect the highlights. So depending on the eyes, like if you have somebody has really blue radiant eyes or eyes that have a lot of um, variation to them, uh, bringing up the shadows or the dark end or the, the dark end of the spectrum, the shadow end won't affect the highlight area. So you can see how that brings it up a little bit. And I will zoom out just a bit to show you the difference. I intentionally made her face small in the image because I want you to see how, how much the eyes pop. So it's pretty nice. This the Her left eye is a little bit stronger than her right, so I may go in on that one. Let's see, i got to go in a little bit more. There we go. There I go. I may just brush in a little bit more so you can look at the mask. See, this one's heavier than this, this one right here. And that may just be due to the amount of light entering her eyes. 
So that's how I would do it in Capture One. It works the same way in Lightroom, basically. You just use that brush tool. Boom, boom. Okay. So now what you want to do is get this into Photoshop, which I've already done. Here we go. Now in this area, what we want to do is, I'll delete this. Let's create um, a duplicate layer. You can right click, say duplicate layer, or I just do Command J. There we go, turn that off. So if we just did a dodge and burn, like in one of my previous videos, you saw me use the, um, the paintbrush. Let me get to the brush, hit B for brush, and you can do a darken or lighten dodging and burning using a blend mode of soft light using black or white colors. So you could do that. If you wanted to do something real quick, you might do this, you might do this, you might do this. And then you could even do a little bit underneath like that, depending on how far, depending on how far you want to go with it, you could do that. Problem is it's not accurate. It bleeds over, it mutes colors. I don't think it's real accurate. I don't think it's, it's really beautiful. So in Photoshop, what I would do is instead of doing like custom layers and all that stuff, I would go into filters and camera raw because in camera raw, it will try to protect all those, uh, the contrast, the contrast range, saturation range as you make those adjustments. Now, yes, it's not centered. I know this is how I shoot it. Then I crop it later. That's, that's how I work. Perfect. All right. So grab the brush tool. Same thing applies in here. Just like what we did in, uh, in, um, capture one. And I'm going to turn on the mask, which is why or it's down there at the bottom right corner. Going to brush in there. It's okay if it's a little loose and sloppy, that's fine. Turn that off. Now in here, oops, let me reset all these tools. There we go. So now I might want to bring up the highlights a little bit and sometimes the whites, just kind of depends on where the tones are in there. So I like that, that's nice. Then do a new brush and let's zoom in a little bit, make the tool a little smaller and I'm gonna go right underneath here right underneath that pupil. If you want to see what it looks like, hit Y. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to bring up the exposure in this case. I don't want the highlights up, just the exposure. Yeah, maybe a little contrast in there. Maybe a little clarity. Yeah, it brings a little bit of those blacks back in there. All right, perfect. So if we pull back, there we go. And you'll see the before and after when we get into back into Lightroom, I mean, capture Photoshop, too many applications open all at one time. So here we go. So this is the original and that's the after nice and mellow. So since we're here and we have some highlights, let me show how we, I would affect those highlights. I would fix those. So I'd use a stamp tool and I would go over to the blend mode and I would choose darken. And I usually keep my opacity at 100 and the flow about 25 so I can brush it in. So basically, I don't want to get rid of it because specular highlights show shape and that's not a bad thing. So I'm going to choose from an area near here, maybe like right here, and I'm going to gently brush over it. And all it's going to do is bring the highlight part of that down. The nice thing is, is if it's lighter where I'm choosing and I've told the blend mode to darken, that if I go to paint over something that's darker than where I'm cloning from, it won't have an effect. See how it only affects right there because it was lighter. So that's nice because it keeps all that texture and that detail in our faces. So like I can get rid of this little highlight right here. I could even come in here and I could very lightly bring that down without actually affecting the texture of her face very much before and after. And there you go, some quick tips on how to tune up the eyes, fix some highlights. I'm sure there's more than a million ways to do any and all of these techniques, but these are techniques I've been using for a long time and they work really well for me. So hopefully you can add those to your Photoshop toolbox set. I'm Troy Miller with SpicyJello.com. Catch you later.